I think more and more we recognize that vitiligo patients uh, are suffering from their disease. When we look at uh, their quality of life, the effect of the disease on their quality of life, it's similar to those who suffer from psoriasis and, and atopic dermatitis. And so we know that our patients with vitiligo uh, deserve uh, treatment. Unfortunately, uh, we have very few FDA approved therapies for vitiligo. In fact, the one medical therapy that we have for this disease is monobenzyl ether of hydroquinone. Uh, and this treatment actually worsens the disease. So it, it bleaches the skin so that, that, that they have an even tone. And for the right patient, that's a good thing. But uh, I think it's, it's shocking that the only FDA-approved treatment we have is to, to worsen uh, the disease. So we need to do better. Research in the past 10 or so years has really enlightened us as, as to what is causing vitiligo. We're realizing that it's, it's a pathway, the interfering gamma pathway in particular, that is distinct from other diseases that we can treat well, uh, like psoriasis, which is an IL-17 pathway, and atopic dermatitis, that's, that's uh, a type 2 cytokine pathway. And so we really don't have any FDA-approved treatments that target the right pathway for vitiligo. They're probably the earliest treatments that are going to come to market are uh, JAK inhibitors for vitiligo. So while it's not necessarily a targeted therapy, uh, JAK inhibitors interfere with that cytokine signaling pathway, interfering gamma. And uh, there are some indications from case reports and case studies uh, that uh, they're effective for vitiligo, both topically and orally. And so that's very exciting. Um, I think that the, really the first generation um, treatments that come out uh, and are FDA approved and available for patients with vitiligo are going to be the JAK inhibitors most likely. Um, but I think that, that, that that's just going to be the beginning. I think that we, can, um, we, have, we still have a lot of room to grow in our understanding of vitiligo and in our ability to generate new therapies for the disease. One example is that uh, current um, off-label therapies that we use, as well as what, it, what looks to be the JAK inhibitors, uh, relapse uh, as soon as we stop taking the drugs. So patients with vitiligo that take uh, either conventional therapies or, or uh, the JAK inhibitors, when the drug is stopped, about 40% of them relapse within the first year. Uh, and, and it's likely that even more relapse the second year. And, and so vitiligo comes back. And it, it appears to come back in the exact same location it was before. And so that tells us that, tells us that there's autoimmune memory that's forming in the skin uh, at those locations. And uh, so what we learn in the lab is that uh, the cause of that relapse, the cause of that return of the, of the spots in the same location is due to uh, a T cell called uh, autoimmune resident memory T cells. Um, their job really is to fight viral infection, go into the skin, clear the virus, and then a few of them stay behind in case that virus ever comes back. And we, we learned, uh, as well as others uh, around the world actually, other labs learned that these autoreactive cells, uh, memory cells, are forming in vitiligo as well. So they implant themselves in the, in the epidermis of these white spots. Um, they cement themselves in. They never leave. And when we use conventional therapy, they turn off and everything gets better. But as soon as we stop the therapy, they wake back up uh, and reinitiate the disease. So one of the things that we learned is that uh, they require uh, another cytokine, IL-15, for their survival. Um, and uh, we see that that appears to be the case both in human and in a mouse model of disease. And uh, when we targeted IL-15 in the disease, we were able to reverse disease um, like many other therapies. But we found that these resident memory T cells uh, disappeared from the skin after blocking the cytokine. So that told us two things. Number one, this could be a targeted pathway that would significantly improve uh, our, our treatment options for vitiligo. But uh, it may also be a durable treatment and therefore have long-lasting effects. Um, so the idea is we can, we can potentially treat this disease, remove all the memory cells, uh, and, and, and therefore the, the spots uh, possibly would not come back when the therapy was stopped. And so we're excited about this potential uh, for a new therapy. So we anticipate uh, that we uh, can be testing this therapy in the next year or two uh, in clinical trials. And we're very excited about its potential to be a, a new therapy for patients with vitiligo, and potentially a durable one.